Thank you for listening to Christ Alone Podcast, where we believe that Jesus lived, died, and resurrected according to the scriptures. Our hope is that God can bless you through this week's episode. All right, welcome back. You're listening to Angie and Steven's podcast. Christ Alone. Christ Alone Podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for joining us again. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the last episode where we had our brother Craig on from Awaiting Christ. Um, if you have not heard it, go and check it out. Um, you can also go and find him on Twitter at Awaiting Christ. Um, Can I ask a quick random question? Because I sure. had to leave um, like right after we finished the episode. Yeah. I had to go see Matthew. How long did you, because you both seem like talkers. Yep. How long did you both talk after that? I I don't, I'm not sure. At least 30, 40 min- minutes. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> just curious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I told him too. I was like, man, we could just keep talking. Yeah, I know. Um <laughs> Yeah, we could. Um, All right, so James, we last, well, before last. James, we last. Listen, listen, Linda. James, we last (laughs) spoke about James two weeks ago, um, chapter one, verses one through eight. So today we're going to start from verse nine and see how far we get. (laughs) See how far we get. So, I mean, I was hoping to end this chapter in two parts, but we might, it, it might be three parts. We'll see. But we'll see what the Lord has in store. Amen. All right, so... Um, so we're in First James today? Yeah. <laughs> James uh, chapter 1, verse 9. And I'll just... Uh, I'll read a couple verses and then we'll stop and we'll go from there. And it says, Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation. Because like a flower of the grass... He will pass away for the sun rises and it's scorching heat with its scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Um, go ahead. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I, I, I mean, I was reading, Um, James one earlier today and it's just there's so much in this chapter and it's all so delicious Um, it just makes me you know how we're reading the Old Testament right now it just made me realize that I have to like throw some New Testament in there because New Testament is so rich Um, and so I mean it I guess it it talks a lot about humility and pride I would say Mm -hmm. Um, and basically the one who is prideful like they're gonna like, like all of us, there's an end to our days, you know, to dust, we will return. Um, and so um, it's easy to be prideful. But at the end of the day, you're gonna, we're gonna come before God, basically. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation. Um, it, it makes a point. It, it's interesting that it says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation um, because it, the exaltation that we're boasting in is not our own. Right. It's Christ's. Right. So if we abide in Christ, um, that is where the honor and the glory goes, yeah. not to ourselves. I think it's calling back to the Beatitudes in uh, the Gospels where I think Jesus, Jesus is talking about how blessed are the poor, um, for they will be, I don't remember Yes, exactly. well, it's an echo of the Old Testament also. In right. Jeremiah 9.23, it says, Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. Um, and then Matthew 5, the one I was referring to, is blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they they shall inherit the earth. And it goes on after that. Yeah. So 
um, even though the lowly brother um, is, you know, is boasting in the exaltation, um, which is in Christ, um, that doesn't mean, hey, you know, uh, be prideful, be prideful or, or, you know, try and partake in this, in this honor and this glory that's meant for God, because mm -hmm. it can happen. It can happen to the wise man when he boasts in his wisdom. Right. Right. Um, I think, I think it, it's contradictory for the wise man to boast in his wisdom because the wise man knows not to right. uh, boast in his wisdom. Um, and, you know, some of the strongest men, it says here, the mighty man boasts, let not the mighty man boast in his might. You know, some of the strongest men didn't boast in how strong they were. They knew, you know, the, the strongest men, the wisest, strongest men know that if, you know, if they can beat everyone up in the room, they don't need to tell everybody or let everybody know that they are strong. Right. You know, they'll just do it if it comes to that. And people know that. Um, let not the rich man boast in his riches. I mean, how many, how many prideful, wealthy people are there, right? Doesn't Jesus say, you know, it, it is, it is what easier for a camel to go through the, I have a needle. I have a needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. I mean, that says a lot. It does. Um, and then um, I think of also Ephesians 2, 8. For, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Verse 9, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I know a lot of, uh, I guess, unbelievers or people that oppose the Christian faith will say that the Bible has contradictions. Um, and I think at the surface level, it might seem that way. But if you are being led by the Spirit and you're looking at the context, it's not contradictory at all. It's It, it instead complements one another. Um, because that's talking about, you know, when, like, like you were saying earlier, we shouldn't boast, but if we do, let our boasting be in the Lord. Let our yeah. boasting be in what he has done for us. Because even the things that we do, it's not because we've done them. It's because God has given us the opportunity to do it. God is the one who planted the seed in us first. Yeah. God is the one who gives us the breath in our lungs to be alive, to be able to do that. He's the one that closes and opens the doors. So it's only through him, by him, and for him that we should be doing things. Amen. Um, I think this verse also implies, you know, when it's it's... It's assuming, right? It says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation and the rich in his humiliation because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. The assumption here is that those that abide in Christ are going to exalt Christ and every chance that they get are, are going to give him the honor and the glory. And um, the rich who ignore all of that and focus on exalting their riches in turn will end up humiliated. They, in essence, what the, the scripture is saying is they're exalting or they're glorifying their humiliation because, or boasting about it, because what's going to happen in the end was when they stand before God is they're going to want to be in his presence yeah. And they will not be able to. Yeah. And sadly, there's no more chances once you're in front of God. Yeah, and the um, next verse adds to that. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flowers fall, um, and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuit. So um, kind of like, you know, exactly what you're saying that the I, like the rich right now have what seems to them, you know, in their spiritual blindness what seems to them to be you know the best thing in the world amazing everything you know uh physical things right material things they have the Perishable best things. cars best houses best they have a lot of money um but all that is going to perish it's it although it might seem beautiful it perishes whereas salvation is a beauty that is everlasting and never perishes. Yeah. Um, but the other thing to consider when reading this, it's easy for us to point finger fingers and look at, you know, say Hollywood or um, people in politics or people that 
have what we think to be a lot of money. But when we look at it in comparison to a large part of the world, as Americans, we're filthy rich as we are right now. Like those of you who have one house, there's people who live in their cars, you know, there's if people they who even don't, have one. if they even have one. Um, those of us who have the opportunity to have had the opportunity to go to school, there's thousands of people, probably more that never had that opportunity nor will. Um, and so it's easy for us to, like I said, point fingers and not realize that it's in, in, in a lot, in a greater sense, we can be the rich. Um, and so we have to be careful because as you said, it's easier for um, a rich person to go through the a camel. It's, it's easier, easier for, for a camel, camel to go through the eye of a needle, which which is impossible, obviously, um, than for a rich person to get into the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it references here, it says, like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. A flower, you can admire it and its beauty and it's wonderful and it can, you know, bring someone joy when you're g gifting it to them. Um, but in the end, like it's 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 temporal it will yeah. it will die and so just like everything else in the world the implication here is that when you set your heart on the things of the world and you boast about them you're wasting your time you're you're setting yourself up for failure and humiliation because all of that stuff will pass away and will perish but what will not is uh is Christ and right. the love and the mercy and kindness that Christ offers us. Um, that's why, you know, it says, let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation because the exaltation, again, it's not of his own doing, but it's, you know, imputed to him through the sacrifice that Christ did on the cross. Right. Yeah. And then it reiterates, so also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. It's like, hey, man, you're wasting your time. I don't know what you're doing but you're wasting your time here. Um, and there's many of references of that in the Old Testament throughout the, all of the scripture. Um, 1 Corinthians 7.31 says, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it, for the present form of this world is passing away. Um, and that's what we're waiting. That's, that's the hope. That's the hope that the Christian, that the believer has. Not, I mean, that, that, sort of. We're not hoping that the world is going to pass no, away. No, no. I mean, let me Jesus... finish my statement. Oh, sorry, Our hope ahead. is in the that Christ is returning to redeem us right. from this perishing world. Gotcha. And, and reposition us into an everlasting world where we abide in his presence. Right. All right. So, verse 12 Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. There's just so much to say there. Um, I mean, you're talking about the Beatitudes earlier. Right. Uh, in Matthew 5. Um, this is a wonderful thing, man, because... Um, it says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. It means, hey, it, <laughs> you're not, oh, like, God has the, the right to free you from any trial that he chooses. But it's important to know that even though um, God can, it doesn't necessarily mean that he always will. Um, you know, trials build character. They, they, um, they make you stronger in your faith because the idea is, hey, you want to be able to trust in God no matter what. And if you don't trust in God, then you will not remain steadfast under that trial. You're going to lose your mind. You're going to revert back to your old sin. You're going to revert back to that old you, you know, and you're going to struggle with that. And, you know, if you if you're seeking God, pursuing him, um, you know, the Holy Spirit will give you a way out. Right. You know. Yeah, one of my favorite stories um, in the Bible is uh, the one of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they're thrown into the... Basically, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar tells them, Hey, if you don't 
follow my gods or um, I forgot if it was a statue or if, or, or if it was to worship him. I don't remember exactly, but uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were set on only worshiping their own God, you know, which is the God of the Bible. Um, and so and King Nebuchadnezzar says, well, I'm going to throw you into the um, into this furnace. And their response was, I know that God can save me from this furnace. I know that he will, but even if he doesn't, um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to walk away from my God. You know, what we see happen is, you know, God shows up. Um, and when they look into the furnace, it's not just the three of them that, you know, they just don't see the three men that they threw in there. They see another person, which we believe to be, you know, God, most likely Jesus walking in there with them. Um, and so it's just, um, understanding, like you said, that trials will come because we are, uh, still in our flesh because we are still in this world. But when they do, uh, if our trust is in God, we understand that no matter what, he's going he's gonna to take us through. He's going to be our, um, what, who sustains us. Amen. Amen. Um, Jesus tells us also in Revelation 2, in reference to um, that crown, it says, uh, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Again, it's like, he's not saying, do not fear what you might suffer. <laughs> it's like, hey, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days, you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Right. Jesus says in Revelation 3.11, I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. And 2 Timothy 4, 8, it says, henceforth, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Now, I know that obviously it's, we can't know now, but do you think um, these references to crowns are actual crowns? Or are they metaphors for something else? Um, yes. Okay. Both. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... So you think they could be both? They could be both. Um, I, I, I've learned recently not to, not to limit God. <laughs> okay. um, we have to understand that when God speaks, he could mean one of many things, but also all of those things at the same time. Amen. And also at the same time at different times, if that makes any sense. Right. Um, that so, doesn't make sense. So, because so, God is perfect. Listen, God is the only one that could inspire people across uh, 1,500 years from different regions and different languages to tell uh, the same coherent and cohesive story that talks about Jesus and his plan for redemption and the ultimate outcome of that and his return. Like, only God can do that. So... There's a lot, you know, we talked last time with Greg about how so many Christians are arguing about, oh, there is no rapture or there is a rapture, but it's mid-tribulation or post-tribulation or pre-trib, whatever, right? And it's like, um, yeah, I, I mean, we have to be open that to, because we can't, the Bible says we cannot know the mind of God. Right. Right. And because God is perfect and all-knowing, he can say one thing that could mean something for a specific time period, and then it could mean something else in a different time period, but still mean all the same all at once. Right. Um, I know it's like a little confusing, but um, that's just, remember, there's, there's mysteries that, um, that were revealed to Paul that were always in Scripture, but it wasn't until God revealed them to Paul 
that Paul could articulate and reveal those to everyone else. It wasn't like it it's it wasn't like a new revelation in the sense of here is something entirely different and new. It was like, look, this was always here, but it was hidden because it wasn't for it was for a specific time. Right. So back to your question about the crowns. I believe that they could be physical crowns and um, crowns that are, aren't necessarily representing any type of kingship like we know them to be. Right. But crowns that obviously represent awards that are um, reflective of the Holy Spirit's work in someone's life. Right. So someone who, for example, uh, a church leader, a pastor, you know, a pastor is going to receive a crown that, you know, probably most might not receive because he is in a specific position of leadership. And, you know, there's a there's like an additional uh, sense of responsibility that he's held he or she is held accountable for you know um however when i the times i've seen crowns being mentioned in the bible mm -hmm. or like even the references you just mentioned it doesn't talk about a specific leader it just talks about honestly someone just walking through the christian faith and uh, struggling in just life in general so we see blessed is the man who remain who remains steadfast under trial i mean that's a lot of Christians have gone through some trial in one way or another. Yeah. Um, so personally, I'm not sure if it would be a pastor or leader. I mean, they, they could. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I could, I could, for example, uh, a man who is the, you know, the leader, spiritual leader of his home, could receive that crown as well as the leader of his home. Right. My my point is, is that, you know, we. We're like, how do I say it? The crowns are representative of, I guess, what, again, what the Holy Spirit has done in our life or what, you know, we, in a sense, have allowed the Holy Spirit to do in our lives. Because I think sometimes there are crowns available to us that, you know, for whatever reason, you know, uh, we take our focus off of Jesus. We you know, get preoccupied or distracted with the world or with sin, whatever the case, um, that we may miss out on that crown. Um, again, God is in control. So, you know, it may be something to where God is still going to provide us the opportunity to access these crowns, but it doesn't matter, right? Because in the end, Scripture says that we will um, throw our crowns before his feet. Because they're not ours anyways. Right. Like, we can't achieve these crowns. It's God that achieves these crowns through us, through the Holy Spirit. Um, so this goes back to, you know, the earlier verse. It's like, what is the lowly brother that boasts in his exaltation? It's, it's actually the one who, you know, uh, deflects, you right. know, worship and all of that to God because... He takes off his crown and throws it at, at the his, feet of God. Exactly, exactly. Right. And so I think that's the implication here. All right, so let's see if we can finish this section at least. <laughs> uh, let, uh, verse 13, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death so i mean a lot of people will would like to um say that god brings forth evil when in reality that's not the case um a lot of people will even um blame satan i mean honestly if satan for a lot of bad when it's not even satan at all it's just your poor decisions our poor decisions our own flesh this this is saying this doesn't even mention satan this is yeah um each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Yeah. And desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin brings forth death. Yeah, we we give definitely give Satan a lot of credit. Um, he's not all powerful. He's not. Listen, he's not even equal. Um, he was created by God, and 
you know, he's going to be defeated. In fact, he's already defeated because it's already been written. Right. Um, th- th- he has no power over any of us. Right. But he can distract you. Mm-hmm. Um, but God definitely, it says that God cannot be tempted with evil and he himself tempts no one. Yeah. Um, I think one of the hardest, and I mean, I don't know if you, we've probably spoken about this, but I can't remember, but I think one thing that's hard for me to read is Job, I think it's Job 1 and 2, when it says that God, um, he basically, he, it sounds like he entices Satan to um, harm yeah. Job. Yeah. But it's for his own glory. Right. It's it's like if he hadn't, if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't know Job's story. And, you know, it wouldn't inspire us and encourage us to to be faithful. I mean, that's true. But it's just, I mean, it like you, it the, almost seems like God is the one causing it. Because it says, yeah, it it's, literally, it's the conversation is between God and Satan. And then God tells Satan, have you considered Job? <laughs> That's literally yeah. the question that yeah, he asks. Right, but how how is God going to talk to Satan unless Satan's already there? It, it Remember, the scripture sex, s- says that, you know, Satan is accusing us all right. the time. So this is like a constant, like, maybe like a, like a board meeting that you know right. that goes on in heaven where Satan's like, "Look, man, Angie, she's terrible. She, you know, did this and thought this and thought these." And Jesus is like, "No, it doesn't matter. She's yeah. she, her sins are forgiven. Like, what sins are you talking about? Like, they've been blotted out." Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, and also look at the oh, this is perfect. Remember when Jesus is walking through and he heals the blind man? Uh-huh. And, and and then they ask him, they're like, uh, Rabbi, who, you know, what, you know, why is he blind? Like, did his parents, co- what sin did his parents commit that he's blind? He's, and he's like, no, no, no. He, he, like, basically, I'm paraphrasing heavily here, but he basically says, listen, this was for the glory of God. Like, you know. It's possible that he was blind his entire life just so he could be cured right there in front of everybody so that God could be honored and glorified. Right. I'm trying to so, find it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. And let's see. Moving on to verse 16. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift... Mm-hmm. And every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So I think this is just following like the previous verses where, so he's going a bit further. He's like, not only does God not, tempt or cause evil but he you know only good comes from him and yeah. whenever something good happens know that it is from god yeah uh, pastor jack hibbs says something pretty uh funny too um a lot of times when he's kind of going off uh, on something he's like listen um he's like i'm gonna say something that i thought about and if you know if it's good it's from god but you know, if it's bad, it's from, it's, Jack. it's from Jack. Right. Yeah, you know, Jack did it, and that's a that's a good mindset to have because that you know that that brings humility. You know that brings um, all of that because you don't want to accidentally pull a Moses and take part in glory that's meant for God. Right. Amen. Amen. Um. It says, of his own will, he brought forth, yeah, the word of truth. Yeah. The, I mean, what else can we say about that? So it says that God, um, there is no variation with God. That means there's no um, spirit of confusion. There's no shadow due to change. That means he, he, doesn't, he change. doesn't change. I mean, 
a, a lot of people also, they're like, oh, you know, I don't read the Old Testament because, you know, that was a different God than the God we know in the New Testament. No, no, no. It's the same God. Yeah. It's the same God. In fact, he, if you want to find, like, it's like, oh, the New Testament is a graceful and loving God. It's like, no, no, no. You, the, the reason that it's written in the New Testament is because it's in the Old Testament. Right. Yeah. I think it's just, uh, I think the, I think the, what I like most about the Old Testament and showing God's, I guess, anger in such a manner, because I think that's what people are referring to, saying that they would prefer the New Testament, is that it shows how much God hates sin, how much it grieves him. Like the yeah. fact that he responds with fire and fury, it's because he hates sin. And that's basically what happens in the New Testament. It's exactly what happens in the New Testament, except Jesus takes on that sin. And yeah. that's why everything looks differently. Yeah. Yeah, and so, so far in James, this, this, this whole chapter so far is about you being tested. Um, you know, um, the, the temptation is your own creation, you know, in your mind when you let it uh, marinate in your mind and in your heart. Like we have the option to let it sit there and become sin and become something else. Or we have the power to pray against it and ask God to remove the thoughts. Right. Like I, I find that so helpful. It's, you know, it's something that I practice now and it, it works. It actually works. Yeah. You know, I think about something that I'm not supposed to and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I was like, God, please, you know, remove these impure, un impure thoughts yeah. or these evil thoughts from me. And I also think, I mean, I think that's the probably the most important, but also it's important to, which we've mentioned before, guard your heart and mind with what you watch and listen to. Because yeah. I, I feel like I struggle most with my thoughts when I'm watching shows that don't real that are showing things or talking about things that aren't really good. Yeah. Um, or listening to me. Well, my thing is I, music. I listen to the same songs. But like when it comes to shows, like I've come to the point where it's like, no, this shows this show has talks about sex too much. So I can't I can't be watching yeah. this. Like I can't let this into my spirit. Yeah. Even if I'm watching it with so if I started a new show with someone else, I'm like, I can't. No, I'm yeah. not going to watch this anymore. And, you know, and that's the case for you. Mm -hmm. that might not be the case for the next person. The next, yeah. For the next person, it might not be the, the sex part. It might be the cursing. Right. Or it might be the way women are portrayed or men are portrayed. Yeah, or wh it, whatever. It, it it's varies a, by person. I think yeah. everybody has their own struggles with their own, um, I guess, thoughts. Yeah. And it's whatever you struggle with. You have to just be, be sure to guard your yeah. heart from that. Yeah. Like some people are convicted to not watch The Chosen. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. But some people don't have that conviction and can watch The Chosen. But the important thing to keep in mind is that that doesn't make one person saved or not. That's not, a, that's not something that is, uh, you know, salvific, you know. Right. So, um, yeah, just um, abide in the Lord. Seek him. Seek him first. And, um, and pray, man. Yeah, it's what we it's what we tell everybody, um, and seek fellowship. You know, we had a we had our life group this Friday, and it was pretty great. And we got to just hang out, and um, it was just mostly introductions because it's a new group, but it, it's awesome. You know, yeah. it was it was awesome to do that, and. I'm excited to see what God does with that as well. And um, and also, for those of you that don't know, and I don't know if you wanted to say anything, but we didn't talk about it because we had a guest last week, but my sister's engaged now. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, yeah. So congratulations Praise to my Lord. sister. And um, I would ask our listeners to just pray for her and for her fiancé. And um, and that's it. That's yeah. it. God bless everybody. Amen. We'll see you guys next week, I guess. And if right? we don't see you next week. We'll see you in the clouds. God bless.